and here we are up here. And I really do build my own domes. <laughs> That's me up there. A little scary with me, 45 feet of ground, though. <laughs> but uh, here's the view looking north. That's Ipswich Bay. Ooh. My son. And it's Gary Walker, one of the members of the club. Like I said, we I, it took me four months to make all the parts, have them ready, but we put it up in one weekend, uh, working from 8 a.m. to uh, 8 p.m., uh, and then pizza and beer. So like I said, they work really cheap. So labor costs are 40 bucks. Um, material, the whole dome cost me about 1,400 bucks. So uh, that's just because the wood, and I was able to get the fiberglass free. It's structural fiberglass from uh, Calwell Corporation up in New Hampshire. Um, like I said, we worked into the night. <laughs> and uh, at this stage, it was November, and my wife's here trying to figure out how the heck we got the dome finished before the builders got the dome finished. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a matter of priorities. You can only pay them with pizza and beer, right? Yeah. Uh, bottom line is, I built the observatory and she insisted on a house. So, <laughs> so that's the inside, how it moves the dome. Uh, now, black dome, this. <laughs> the. The uh, fiberglass is translucent, and if you just paint it, you, it can't have to get rid of the translucency. So if you're going to work with that, you got to paint the black once, and then paint the white, mm -hmm. and uh, then it becomes opaque. It's the only way to figure out how to make it work. In order to make it uh, waterproof, every scene, uh, you put um, caulking, and every place you put a screw, you buy these washers. Uh, that you use for a, uh, a bathroom, basically rubber washers, and you put a rubber washer on, a regular washer on top of that, and then a screw through that, and now you have a waterproof seal everywhere. I've never had a leak in any of the three domes. My oldest dome was nearly 20 years, and what's now I'm taking part. Uh, no, no leaks. Works perfectly fine. How many screws did it take for you just to sign this? Uh, a couple of thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, there's the. Uh, finished dome. Jeez. Here's the control room. And uh, it's nice having a warm, wow. this is the first top observatory I have that has a nice warm control room actually. It's well insulated, super insulated from this side to the other side. Uh, especially thick walls with lots and lots of insulation. And basically I can sit here or here, or actually anywhere in the house and run the dome. In fact my, my fervent wish is after I finally get everything computerized, including the rotation of the dome, uh, I want to sit in my hot tub on the other end of the house and take a <laughs> I just want to be able to say I did that once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, this is the scope that goes in it, and I have a separate talk for that. So I'm going to skip over this right now, other than just to show you. That's Scott Milligan, and he's a professional optical designer. Uh, and he gave me a deal I couldn't turn down. I've always ground all my own telescopes, made up, designed all my own lenses. He came up with a design for me, which I ran by Paul Valelli, George Ace, a number of friends. And uh, he said he'd uh, uh, be able to do the main mirror in his uh, uh, setup. So how do you turn that down? Mm -hmm. Anyways, here's the completed scope, and I'll show you how we get to that in just a moment. Inside the dome. Let's skip over that. Open dome. Here's the view going north. Okay, so you see it's just a short walk down to the beach, five minute walk, and it's a private beach that's actually pretty nice. So if you come up and observe, you know, come a little early, take a walk on the beach. Are they proper street lights? Uh, it's, it's a full cutoff. Actually, they had a hang down globe, and I went to the electric company. We're trying to get a light pollution law passed in Gloucester, and I got the mayor for it, now the city council for it, just, just a few months away. Will pass, but they had me meet with uh, the energy uh, company that provides the, the lights. And I, they said, from now on, can we have full cars? And I said, yeah, we'll even do that before the things pass. So I got one street light. I got to kill. Okay. The next day, they changed this to a full cutoff. Ooh, it's, wow. in, it's in my north. In my south, they have no lights. Anyways, this, go, this is looking north, and that's the New Hampshire coast. And you can see as far as Kinnipunkport. And that's uh, Plum Island over here. Looking uh, east, it's perfectly black because have the Anisquam, 
obviously no construction here. And you got this one rise, beyond that it's open ocean. And looking south, this is not my tennis courts, the association's <laughs> tennis courts, but there's no lights. Um, and then it goes about four, four or five miles to the next rise, and then here's the center of Gloucester here, but this kind of shuts down at night, it's pretty nice, and then it's open ocean that way. So I'm on a peninsula, which makes it pretty dark. Looking directly west is the only light pollution I have. It's out here. It's about a dome, about 15, 20 degrees. The rest of it's very, very dark, six magnitude, uh, sky at least, and uh, uh, that's the Essex River where all the clams come from. So it's kind of a nice location. Uh, here's the beach. That's the New England's Lawton's private beach, actually. We'll skip over these. No, why are you skipping over these? Well, I got other stuff to talk about. So let me uh, get to the other talk, which is what I really want to talk about, which is the uh, the telescope. Okay. Let me do it the time. Okay, good. Well, I just want to spend more time talking about the scope and the construction. The easiest thing. So let me skip over that. Um, had an accident, broke my hip. Um, on my other scopes, 32 inch in New Hampshire, you have to climb a ladder. It's a Newtonian. Getting older. <laughs> uh, if you're out in the cold, I want to be able to observe from the warm room. So. Uh, and I wanted, uh, I didn't want just an, uh, another Newtonian F4. Uh, this gave me the ability to put it at F6. It's an all spherical optical design in the six elements here, so there's 11 optical surfaces had to be made. And something unique, and that uh, drove, drove me to it as well. It's the largest relay scope ever made. Um, you can vary the design to go from F4 to F20. I ended up with F6 because that's I thought would be best for what I wanted to do. Uh, doesn't have a large central obstruction. It's fully baffled without vignetting. I didn't realize how important that was until I actually started looking for it. I can see more, <coughs> even though the skies in New Hampshire are a little bit darker, I can see more in Gloucester now than I can with the other scope because it's fully baffled. My neighbor in New Hampshire, I have one person across the street. Other than that, there's no lights. If he puts on his porch light, I, I phone him and threaten him uh, because it ruins, I can't, I get gradients on my uh, photos and that's, geez, he's got to be at least a uh, good 1,500 feet away, more than that, and, and that's just one light and it bothers me. With this scope, yeah, I bet you can't do this with any scope you own. You take a flashlight and point it down the tube into the main mirror and you barely notice that a light's been put on. I know you find that hard to believe, but I've done this and it mm. just blew me away first time that I, I experienced that. In fact, I used a red flashlight with Scott when he was first testing. He looked through, and his question was, did you put the light in yet? <laughs> and I said, yes, it's shining in there. So I switched to a white light, really bright, and he said, oh, yeah, I can notice it now. Okay, it's so it's baffled, and any light that does isn't exactly perfectly parallel can't get through the baffling. Hmm. So it's perfect baffling, and it has zero vignetting. Most scopes you're always wondering how big to make the secondary, whether you're going to have it uh, uh, fully uh, illuminated or not. This is 100% illuminated to the edge of the field of view, and I get a 30 arc minute field of view. What does it mean, a relay telescope? I'm going to explain Okay. That. And it's all spherical design, which uh, makes it a little easier to make the main mirror. Um, off axis symmetry in would be limited if you go too far out. Turns out you have 42 millimeter, uh, uh, which comes through 30 arc minutes. Uh, it's a little more complex design, so I have to take very careful uh, measurements to make sure everything comes out right. Took a little more time for that. Collimation tolerances. My primary and my secondary can vary by more than 25 thousandths, which means just winter to summer, I would lose all collimation. Fortunately, it's following the audio. He must be outside with his uh, playing with his light bridge. He just happened to have a mock-up of the Halo satellite, which he stole from iTech when they set. They always make two satellites. One goes up, one okay. So he had it there. He, we ended up cutting it apart. And most of my <laughs> longitudinal elements I made from the satellite uh, parts. And I'll show you.